Tonight on CBS 4 News, huge Memorial Weekend crowds on Miami Beach with hundreds of officers ready to stop trouble before it starts. There's activity in the tropics and dangerous conditions at South Florida beaches. We have team coverage on your holiday weather. A search for suspects after a taxi driver is killed in his cab and vaccinations designed to protect your pets could kill them instead. Don't miss our special report, but first, tonight's lotto drawing. Sargento's exclusive slide ride bag helps keep our cheese tasting great because it's so easy to close. Ah, uh, so easy to close? Thank you. Sargento's slide ride bag. It just got easier to just say cheese. How far would you go to enhance sexual performance? Monday. Welcome to the Florida Lotto game for Saturday, May 25th. I'm Bridget Austin. Tonight's Lotto Jackpot is worth an estimated $7 million. The first lotto number is 44. The second number is 3. Tonight's third number is 25. The fourth lotto number is 53. The fifth number is 6. And the last number is 4. Live from the new village of Baytown Wharf in a sandestine golf and beach resort, it's the games of the Florida Lottery. Friday and Saturday, May 31st and June 1st. Sandestine, the premier resort destination on Northwest Florida's Gulf Coast. Tonight's Florida Lotto numbers are 44, 3, 25, 53, 6, and 4. And remember, when you play, we all win. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News at 11. First at 11 tonight, tens of thousands of revelers are jamming on Miami Beach alongside hundreds of police officers determined to make sure history does not repeat itself. The city decided to bring in a much larger police force this weekend after huge crowds got out of control last year, and so far the strategy seems to be working. CBS 4's Evan Bacon is live on Miami Beach. Evan? Ileana, what a night and day difference from last year. You can see everybody's out having a good time. The streets are not too crowded like they were last year. There have been 40 arrests since Thursday, but cops say that is typical for a South Beach weekend. Police and partiers are coexisting. Everyone is having a pleasant time. They are getting down in the streets of South Beach. Tens of thousands of partiers flooding Ocean Drive from many points beyond. But they're all claiming one address this Saturday night, South Beach, FLA. There's palm trees, there's the water, there's five, 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 five boys, and it's just a party with me and my girls. Come down, see all the people from everywhere else, you know, just get to know everybody else. It's, it's real cool. Fears of weekend chaos have been wiped out by an overwhelming police presence. 400 officers patrolling most every corner and side street, along with an army of goodwill ambassadors offering assistance to anybody who needs it. Helping them with their, if they're lost or if they need directions and just tell them to have a good time. They'll even tell you how to get to the convention center where you will find a celebrity car show featuring some of the most souped up, magged out, bass pumping cars you've ever seen. To give you a comparison as to what the bass in this vehicle feels like standing on the runway when a 747 is taking off. And while hip-hop has taken over South Florida this weekend, you can look back at another invasion 38 years ago when the Beatles conquered Miami Beach. It's a new photo exhibit opening tonight at Oceanfront Auditorium. Or you can just get your groove on and come party in the streets. And if you plan on coming out to South Beach this weekend, don't even think of driving near Ocean Drive. It is closed from 5th to 15th Street. Most east-west corridors between Ocean and Washington are also shut down. Otherwise, get on your feet, get on your bikes, come out here, have a great Memorial weekend. We're live on South Beach, Evan Bacon, CBS 4 News tonight. And it looks nice on South Beach, but the weather is throwing a wrench into one of the biggest beach weekends of the year. CBS 4 meteorologist Michael Smith begins our team coverage live in weather control. Michael? That's right. We've got a big area of high pressure to our northeast, creating some very gusty 
beach breezes, and that is the perfect setup for rip currents. There's a high to our north giving us northeasterly winds, and that's piling up a lot of water right along the beaches, and the water piles up and wants to go back out into the ocean, and that is what we call a rip current. Now, gusty northeasterly winds in the forecast through tomorrow, so exercise caution and swim near a lifeguard if you do, in fact, decide to head out to the beaches. All right, we talked about weather down in the Caribbean, and here's a look at the satellite image over the last 12 hours. We are still watching for the possibilities, and I'm going to put a question mark right there, for an area of low pressure to form to our south. It looks like if it does, it will track very close to the Florida coast, and we should be on the good side of things, on the western side of that potential low. I'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Our team coverage continues with more on those rip currents and would-be swimmers who were not taking any chances today. CBS 4's Lucilla Ramirez is live in Sunny Isles Beach. Lucilla? Ileana, it is Memorial Day weekend, so those rip current warnings re really didn't keep people from coming out on the beach. They just thought twice before going into the water. She may look inviting, but looks can be deceiving. The rough surf and rip tide making for a dangerous combination up and down the coast this Memorial Day weekend and keeping swimmers out of the water. It's just like a little rough. It's been really rough and um, it's kind of chilly. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty heavy. Yeah. It pulls you right back. In Fort Lauderdale, many did hit the beach, but were very cautious about going in thanks to the rip current warnings that are expected to remain in place throughout the holiday weekend. Lifeguards out here have been trying to spread the word. There's usually undercurrents pulling in, people in and out, so they want them to stay close to shore, and I'm trying to keep my kids close. Not too many swimmers lingered in the water for very long, although the choppy conditions did look enticing for those surfers looking to catch a couple of waves. It's good to surf. It's a little dirty out. It's very choppy, soft running currents. It's not so bad, low tide and everything. Yeah. In Pompano, those who decided to go out for a day on the water also had to deal with the rough conditions this morning. The seas were between five and seven feet. So the Broward Sheriff's Office was out patrolling, warning voters, and making sure they had the essentials on board. So we're basically out to ensure that everybody's operating as safely as possible. We're checking safety equipment, making sure that the uh, all equipment's in the boats that needs to be there, the life jackets are on children and so forth. It helps us because uh, this is a relatively new boat, and it, uh, it, it the officer indicated some of the things that we uh, were lacking, so it helps us. My son and I can go out and do the safer boating in Broward County. Now, luckily, we didn't have any reports of rescues in both Dade and Broward counties. That is the latest on Sunny Isles Beach. The Silver Mira, CBS 4 News tonight. Security is tight in New York tonight as the city began the holiday under a possible terrorist threat. At the Statue of Liberty today, visitors had to file through security checkpoints. Photographs of their faces were compared with a database of terrorism suspects. In a show of confidence in security measures, Governor George Pataki also visited Lady Liberty. Earlier this week, the FBI said it had received unsubstantiated threats against New York landmarks. Another FBI warning tonight, this time small planes are the focus of the threat. The FBI says it has new information that terrorists may use small planes to carry out suicide attacks. But the agency is not releasing any further de details on that threat. Fidel Castro is telling Americans not to fear an attack from Cuba. Speaking at a rally in the city of Sancti Spiritus, the Cuban leader also offered the U.S. his support in the war on terrorism. This on the heel of charges by the Bush administration that Cuba could be developing germ warfare. We are men of ideas and not a community of fanatics. We have never blamed or sowed hatred against the American people for the aggressions we've suffered from their government. They are Castro's first public comments since President Bush's tough Cuba speech Monday, in which he insisted the embargo would not be lifted until Cuba moves towards democracy. We have breaking news now. A man who tried to get away from a traffic stop by ramming a police cruiser. CBS 4's Lisa Cabrera is in the newsroom. Lisa? That's right, Ileana. The suspect apparently refusing to give himself up. Instead, ramming the police cruiser with his car and then taking off. You see the pictures of the damage there. An unmarked police car joins in on this one, chasing the suspect eastbound on Sunrise Boulevard near the intersection at 20th Street. The suspect then hits a Chevy Blazer, hurting two innocent bystanders. Witnesses say it took them a while to figure out what happened. Uh, you heard this loud crash. Um, a whole bunch of police cars, probably around between 10 and 15 police cars, converged on the car. Uh, also... Uh, 
Uh, you heard some loud bangs, which somebody said was the airbags, but somebody else said that they were banging on the windows trying to get the people out. They were All right, we are told that the suspect and the cop were not injured in this accident. The suspect was finally apprehended. Reporting live in the newsroom, Lisa Cabrera, CBS 4 News Tonight. Thanks, Lisa. A home in southwest Miami-Dade goes up in flames and a forgetful cook is apparently to blame. That fire broke out tonight at Southwest 138th Avenue and 14th Street. Firefighters say the homeowner was cooking and had to leave the house for a while and he forgot to turn off the oven. The man returned to find flames pouring from the back of his home. Fortunately, no one was hurt. A South Florida cab driver is gunned down behind the wheel of his taxi. Now police are trying to figure out who killed him and why. CBS 4 Shamari Stone has more from Miami. As medical examiner officers wheel the body of a century cab taxi driver, this crime scene disturbed some people in Little Haiti. It feels bad. It just feels bad. It's horrible. We didn't want security in this area. That's because someone shot the 42-year-old cab driver in the upper torso in the area of Northwest First Place and 58th Street about 6 o'clock Saturday morning. Bleeding profusely from the gunshot wound, the driver travels a block away and his Dodge Caravan crashes into a fence in front of a church on Northwest 2nd Avenue. He died and now Century Cab's owner is shocked. He just started to work like a couple of months ago, really. A nice guy, quiet guy, you know. In my worst dream, I wouldn't dream that, you know. Many people in this neighborhood woke up and wondered why this crime tape was up, but when they realized that a cab driver was shot and killed, they now fear that cabs won't come in their area. You can't get a cab in the neighborhood. You understand? It's hard. When you want to go somewhere, you can't get a cab, or you don't have transportation. A driver cannot refuse a job, period. And while police investigate, they want your help in finding the killer. This guy didn't deserve to die like this. You know, you don't kill a person in the street, especially a person doing his job. And anyone with information about this crime is asked to call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Once again, that's 305-471-TIPS. If your tip leads to a conviction, then you can get $1,000. Even though the cab driver is from the Middle East, police do not believe that this was a hate crime. In Little Haiti, I am Shamari Stone, CBS 4 News Tonight. Newly released documents are providing insight into the case of a five-year-old girl missing for months. An appellate court ordered the release of the full William Wilson case file yesterday. The Department of Children and Families is under fire for losing track of her more than a year ago. Well, the new documents show Rilia's caretakers apply for state welfare aid even after the girl disappeared. The papers also show a welfare fraud investigation is underway. But the name of the person being investigated was deleted before the documents were released. And the files confirm Rilia's DCF caseworker, Deborah Muskelly, filed false reports saying all was well even after Rilia disappeared. Investigators are looking into her handling of the case. New clues reportedly found are adding to speculation that Chandra Levy was murdered. The Washington Post reports knotted clothing was found near Le Levy's remains, suggesting she may have been tied up, but police are not commenting on that report. Today, cadaver dogs were back at Washington's Rock Creek Park, where Levy's remains were discovered Wednesday. Police are still not sure if she died at the scene or was dumped there. Vaccinations that are supposed to protect your pet could kill them instead. Still ahead, what you should know before you go into the vet's office, next in a special report. Well, he could be the next celebrity with a South Florida address and an old tradition with a new sensitivity. Broward County's first gay prom. But first, your winning cash free numbers are 058, play four numbers 8099. And the winning lotto numbers are 3, 4, 6, 25, 44, and 53. Good luck. Chili citrus fire chicken and shrimp. Citrus marinated chicken topped with spicy shrimp. What can you expect at Maroonie's gigantic tent event? 10,000 cars and trucks with 10,000 price tags at 30 Maroonie dealerships. Low payments starting at $1.99 a month or buy with zero down. Plus get a Dan Marino bobblehead just for showing up. It's the Maroonie gigantic tent event now through Memorial Day at all 30 Maroonie dealerships. And ask for Maroonie credit. Nobody gets more people financed than Maroonie. Maroonie! One call does it all. 1-877-MAROONIE. Sit down. So, you got a bum cell plan, huh? 
Look, when I'm out of the office, I need long distance, email, internet, voice dialing. Instead, I get static. I never Shh. said... Did I talk to you? Did I ask you? Who's this? Your Honor, he needs the Sprint PCS Total Digital Connections Plan. Clear calls and all our business tools in one plan. That's your story? Nothing but the truth. Thank you. Sprint PCS Total Digital Connections Plan. Use your minutes any way you want. Chili tender boneless buffalo wings. Bones bad. Meat good. A potential danger to your pet right at the veterinarian's office. Vaccinations that are supposed to protect pets could wind up killing them instead. Now, if you automatically take your dog or cat to get its shots every year, you could be putting your pet at risk. CBS 4 consumer investigator Al Sunshine has more in this special report. She was, we adopted her from the local SPCA and was always our soulmate, and she was just a cuddler, and she was a, a, a regal lady. When Jeff Kramer's short hair cabbie Sylvia died of cancer, he was heartbroken. Later he learned that a common vaccine used to keep cats healthy was a suspected cause of her death. It's just something we were totally caught off guard with and never were made aware about. Researchers now believe that common vaccines for rabies, feline leukemia, and other shots can occasionally cause a fatal form of cancer in cats. It's believed to occur in about one out of every 10,000 shots. If you're the one in 10,000, it's, it's enough, you know. But Kevin Fitzgerald says of the thousands of cats vaccinated at his clinic, a few have developed cancerous tumors from the shots and died. Devastating for both the cat owners and the vets who gave the shots. Every day I come in and I say, I'm not religious at all, but I say, please don't let me hurt anybody. And if I knew I was hurting anybody here, I, you know, then I, I'd, I'd, I'd go to work somewhere else. I'd do something else. Fitzgerald believes the benefits of vaccinating against potentially fatal diseases far outweighs the minor risk of giving a cat vaccine-induced cancer. Good. Up. Jim Schwartz suspects a vaccination for his dog, Moolah, triggered an autoimmune disease that cost his pet its life. I'm not an expert. I lost a dog, without doubt, in my opinion, to unnecessary over-vaccination. Max. Sit down. This should never, ever happen to another dog or another cat. And that's why some vets are now beginning to question automatic yearly vaccinations. Not a routine annual thing, but it's a medical procedure and you evaluate the risks and the benefits for each individual animal. You just have to say what's really important and what is this animal exposed to and what What's the relative risk of disease versus the risk of a, uh, a rare sequela? The next time you take your cat or dog to get vaccinated, make sure to talk it over with your vet. As an example, a cat that always stays inside and is not exposed to other cats may not need to be vaccinated as often as one that spends more time outdoors. I'm Al Sunshine, CBS 4 News, tonight. I was bracing for the worst this weekend. Yeah. So. Well, we had a big question mark on the forecast. There's still a little bit of weather down to our south. We'll take a closer look at that. Let me show you temperatures outside right now. It's still fairly mild in the upper 70s, 78 here at CBS 4 Weather Control, 78 Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and 78 in Key West. Humidity is 58%, winds east to 10, gusting to 25 miles per hour. Let me show you real-time radar very quickly, and we do have a few showers offshore coming in on the northeasterly breeze, so a few coastal sections might see a shower or two. All right. Speaking of cloud cover and rainfall, most of it down to our south today. We've been seeing some upper-level winds throwing some clouds across southern Florida. We made way for a very beautiful sunrise early this morning. And what we're looking at to our south is the potential for an area of low pressure to develop. This is the infrared satellite image over the last 12 hours watching this area right here. And the bright yellows and oranges indicating showers and thunderstorms. But notice how poorly organized this is. So once again, we're still keeping a question mark on if this area will develop. A little wider perspective of it showing very disorganized in nature, so we'll keep an eye on it for tomorrow. Here it is, maybe a low, finally to our south, but it will be to our south and east as we head into Monday. It continues to lift to the northeast. We will be on the western side of things, 
no matter how we slice it here. So that just means breezy sunshine and a spotty shower or storm. Here's the forecast for tonight. Warm breezes, a spotty shower mainly along the coast down to 74. Tomorrow, sun and clouds, just a few showers up to about 86. All right, small craft exercise caution tomorrow. Swimmers beware of rip currents, northeasterly winds, 10 to 20 knots. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, a chance of mainly afternoon storms with daytime highs near 88 degrees. Have a good night. Thank you, Michael. Still ahead tonight, a sports superstar is house hunting in South Florida. Will he be our next celebrity neighbor? And the Boston Celtics had nothing left but its pride going into the fourth quarter. Was it enough? Kimbo Camper will explain. Back in a moment. At Seminole Casino Hollywood, the good times just keep on rolling. And on Memorial Day, you can roll away in a brand new RAV4, courtesy of Toyota of Hollywood. Come into Seminole Casino Hollywood starting May 7th for your entry slip to win a brand new RAV4. Seminole Casino Hollywood, located minutes west of I-95 and Sterling on the corner of 441 and Sterling. Call 1-866-2-CASINO for more information. Don't get trapped. Get Singular Nation. Never pay long distance. Never pay roaming. It's that simple. Self-expression is simple with Singular Nation. Kimbo Camber here with Sports. Well, it wasn't Bird or Russell, but the Parquet Four in Boston played host to a Celtic Classic in Game Three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Antoine Walker and the Celtics did nothing right for three quarters. In fact, the Nets led by 25 after Aaron Williams hit that jumper. It looked like lights out for Jim O'Brien, but the Celtics had other plans. Paul Pierce forced the lane for a deuce, and New Jersey's lead is cut to 328 for Pierce. They get the lead on four Pierce free throws. Then the Nets lose the ball. Kenny Anderson all alone goaltending. Fans in Beantown going wild. The Celtics complete the biggest fourth quarter comeback in NBA history, outscoring the Nets 41-16 in the final quarter to win 94-90 and take a 2-1 series lead. If I was on the other end of this, you know, I would be hurting right now. And uh, I think this is a chance for us, you know, to gain momentum and take control of the series and not look back. Marlins didn't have to look too far for motivation. After handing the Mets a win last night, they were more than ready to return the favor. Mets took a 3-0 lead in the second, then added to that when Timo Perez hits one down the line. That's a double and scores Pedro Astacio. The Mets score four in the inning. Marlins get a big inning in the seventh. Aaron Owens rips one down the line. Michael Olds scores. Jeremy Burnett can't find the handle. D. Lee comes home. Owens winds up with a triple. 4-3 Mets still in the seventh. Lewis Castillo's grounder handcuffs Robbie Alomar. Here comes Owens, and it's all tied at four. Next, Andy Fox hits a chopper. Edgardo Alfonso steals it, then throws it away. One run scores in the single. Castillo comes around from first on the air, and the Marlins have a 6-4 lead. Fox ends up at third. The Mets add a run in the ninth, but Vladimir Nunez gets Mo Vaughn swinging to end the game and register a save. The Marlins win 6-5. They get to within one game of first place. Barry Bonds took another step up the record books today. Bonds came to the plate in the fourth inning and blasted a solo home run. That puts him past Mark McGuire for fifth in the all-time list. It's his 17th game of the season, number 584 for his career. Bonds beat two home runs to tie Frank Robinson for the number four spot. The Canes needed a win tonight to become eligible for postseason play, hosting New York Tech. Bottom of the fourth, Danny Figueroa helps his brother Paco, the Canes starter. The single scores Matt Dreyer, 2 nothing Canes. Tech would tie it up at two. Then in the seventh, Kevin Howard drives in a run with a sacrifice, and the Canes retake the lead 3-2. They would add a run and pick up the win 4-2. The Colorado, Colorado Avalanche faced a must-win situation in game four of the Western Conference Finals, and like they've done in the past, mission accomplished. Scotty Bowman knew a 2-0 lead. The series lead meant nothing in Denver. Tied at one in the third period. 
Joe Stack escapes right through the Red Wings defense and blows it by Dominic Asik. 2-1 Avs has stayed that way until Chris Drury goes top shelf. That's his fifth goal of the playoffs. That proved to be the game winner. The Avs give 31 saves from Patrick Waugh and even the series 2 all with a 3-2 win. I think everybody knows that uh, uh, we, we knew we didn't want to go down three games to one. I mean, that'd be an uphill battle right there. And uh, uh, luckily for us, uh, we, we came out, we played better in the third, uh, got the win, and it's 2-2. Toronto assistant Rick Lay taking over behind the bench for Pat Quinn, Toronto and Carolina. Came with the series 3-1. The Maple Leafs get a break when Brian McCabe's shot goes off the skate of Darcy Tucker for the only goal of the game. Toronto wins 1-0 but still trail in the series three games to two. Well, they call it the Memorial, but hey, it's Jack's tournament. And although Nichols is nowhere near the lead, Sunday will still be a special day. The Golden Bear finished even par after a birdie at 18. That's how good 12 shots off the pace, but what the heck, we'll show them anyway. Don't ask me why. The leader heading into the final round is Bob Toy. He used shots like this. This is very nice. To shoot a 68, he gets to 12 under par. Could have been joined at that lead with by Stuart Sink, but he misses this easy birdie putt on 18. That was for bogey. That made it a bogey. He's at minus 11, one shot back. And a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. Got the final round there. And Indy, NASCAR, for your big day tomorrow. Hi, you earn your pay tomorrow. Right. Thanks, Kim. Still ahead tonight, a South Florida neighborhood may become a little more magical thanks to a celebrity looking for a new address. And a one-of-a-kind prom where in order to get in, you have to be out. We'll explain when we come back. Welcome to your Florida Lottery Sandy Five Days Saturday, May 25th. I'm Richard Dodger. Match all five numbers. You can win up to $100,000. Now, here are tonight's Sandy Five numbers. The first number is 12. Tonight's second number is 11. The third Sandy Five number is 11. Closed captioning is sponsored by City Furniture, the ultimate furniture store. What are you doing? Checking our competitor's finance ad. With a magnifying glass? Fine print, Ed. And what are they hiding? Everything, large down payment, giant minimum purchase. So there's a catch. Well, you better pay in full by the due date or you pay all the interest charges starting from the date of purchase. But not at Rooms to Go. We're the real deal. Rooms to Go pays your interest until January 2004. You pay after January 2004. Your interest starts then. No wonder people prefer Rooms to Go. No accruals, no magnifying glass. Children with Down syndrome are a gift of life. For the buddy walk was just an unbelievable experience. There was just celebration all over, all around us. As a mom, it just really touched my heart. I tell everybody about how good Walmart has been to us. Their people came out and walked. They provided lunch. And at Walmart, we have become partners. They love our kids. That's what we all want, is our children to be accepted for who and what they are. I was very proud of, of our walk. People cared about our kids. IntelliJoy's named the Honda Civic the best overall value of 2002. It's where the smart money is. Now lease the 2002 Civic LX for $189 a month for 36 months. This Memorial Day weekend, join Bears in paying tribute to our American heroes. Bears means fashion, quality, selection, famous brand names, and now 50% off accessories in select Henredon and Drexel Heritage collections. There's more. Choose any suit of mattress and the box spring is free. Buy any Natsuki sofa and the matching love seat is yours at half price. It's all interest free for a full 12 months. Next day delivery for a better lifestyle. Where? Bears. Looks like magic is looking to move near the magic city. 
Former NBA star Magic Johnson is house hunting right here in South Florida. He's said to be looking for a waterfront place on Miami Beach. He's also spending the holiday weekend here. Some South Florida high school students are attending the first gay prom in Broward County. About 150 high school juniors and seniors are participating at the Gay and Lesbian Community Center in Fort Lauderdale. An organization for gay youth organized the prom. And students say it's a night when they can be themselves and have fun. We're not here to judge people or to look at what their faults are or what their um, uh, pros are. They're just here to have a good time. We're here to be with friends. We're here to dance. We're here to eat. Gay problems began in Miami-Dade County five years ago. Don't go away. We'll be right back.